Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. I'm going to be I am going to be solving the math problems out of this book here, GMAT Review, the 12th edition. Uh, I'm about to begin the data sufficiency questions. There are 174 of them altogether. Yep, 174 of them. And I'm just starting out and I'm about to do question number one. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. It's, imp it's important, it's imperative that you, that you have it in front of you. You cannot follow the work unless you have the book in front of you. If you watch my previous clip, which was the introduction to the data sufficiency questions, in the previous clip I, I mentioned the fact that there are 174 questions altogether in this book. And in my opinion, the first 50 are quite straightforward, quite easy, they're not going to take too long. 51 through 100 are medium, they're a little bit more challenging than these. And the last 74, 100 through 174, uh, those are, not all of them, but uh, quite, quite a few of those uh, require uh, some thinking and they're a little challenging uh, so we'll, we'll tackle them when the time comes let's do number one as I start uh, recording more and more of these uh, problems and if you want to search for a given problem one particular problem the tag that you want to use is GMAT 12e for the 12th edition of the book then the page number whatever page number the problem is on page 273 in this case that is sufficiency number one let's take a look at it So as I said before, number one is quite straightforward, quite simple, it will not take that long at all. And the first 50 we're just going to breeze through. And the clips are going to be probably pretty short. Because I want to do one per clip, keeps it simple. The question simply is, how much is, how much is absolute value of x? That's what they're asking, how much is the absolute value of x? And that they give you two statements. Statement one says x equals negative absolute negative of absolute value of x. What does it tell you? Well, we know that absolute value of any number is positive. But no matter what the number is, absolute value of any number is positive. That's what absolute value means. And it's got a negative in front of it. That tells me that x, whatever it is, is a negative number. It could be well, the it, uh, x is a negative number. For example, it could be negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5, positive 5, and then we have a negative in front of it. That tells me that x is negative 5. x cannot be positive. x cannot be positive. But watch this. For example, if you were to pretend that x is positive 7, absolute value of positive 7 is just 7, and then we have a negative sign, but we just said x is positive 7. In this case, we'll end up saying that the positive 7 equals negative 7. It, it, it doesn't work. Whatever x is has to be a negative number. One more time, I'm going to, I'm going to quickly, uh, again, if you do not know this word, learn it, look it up. Recapitulate. What does it mean to recapitulate? Again, as I said, look up in the proper dic look up properly in the dictionary. Uh, recapitulate is the actual word which most people, most of the time, end up abbreviating as recap to summarize to go over something quickly recap while we are at, while we are at it let's digress a little bit and again if you do not know the word digress look that up as well it just means to go off topic it does not hurt to improve one's vocabulary these are good words to know uh, just for the sake of knowing forget about the exam itself but just for the sake of knowing uh, do you know what this word means The reason I bring this up is because I want to make sure that if you learn the word recapitulate, I don't want you to go around making a fool of yourself by making an assumption about the meaning of this word, capitulate. Logic will tell you it means to go something, go over something for the first time, but it does not. That's what, what I hear from a lot of the people. Capitulate means to give in, to surrender, to yield. To give in, to surrender, to yield, capitulate. Learn this word, this word, that word, learn all of them, does, does not hurt. So let me quickly recapitulate here what we just said what we are, what we are being told here is that 
x equals negative of absolute value of x. Well, absolute value of any number is a positive number. And since we have a negative in front of it, that tells me that x, whatever it is, is a negative number. That's all we have. This statement tells us that x is some negative number. But that's the word, some negative numbers. Which negative numbers? I do not know. This statement is not enough by itself. So the very first thing to which we should do, which I forgot to do it here, right, always before, as, when you're taking the exam, when you're taking this GMAT exam, as soon as the data sufficiency problem appears on the screen, the very first thing I do is write down uh, here, A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Make a note of it. A, D, B, C, E. Memorize it, learn it, know it by heart. Write that down first. The statement, first statement, is not enough. It's not enough by itself. That tells me that the answer cannot be A, it cannot be D. If the statement 1 by itself were enough, I would have crossed out B, C, and E. The answer choice is that there are only two possibilities, either, either A or D or B, C, and E. It's got to be one of those two. And I explained all of that in my previous clip, which is what I'm going to label as the introduction. Go, go and uh, watch this thing care carefully and you will you'll hear all about introduction. Let's look at second statement. Second statement tells us, Second statement tells us that x is x squared is 4. Well, there you go. x squared is 4. Well, if x squared is 4, then I know that x would have to be equal to, and I pause here because I want to see what you said. So what do you suppose x would be? No, not just 2, not just 2, not just positive 2. x can be positive 2 or negative. This is how we write it. x could be positive 2 or negative 2 and this is how we write positive or negative 2 that's how we write it so we know that x is either positive 2 or negative 2 it doesn't matter whether it's x is positive 2 or negative 2 the question here is the question here is not how much is x if they were asking how much is x statement 2 would not have been enough by itself to answer the questions because we do not know whether it's x is positive 2 or negative 2 but the question is not being asked the question that is being asked is not how much is x the question that is being asked is how much is absolute value of x? Well, we just found out that x is positive or negative 2. Positive or negative 2. Therefore, the absolute value of x is just 2. We can answer these questions. This statement, statement number 2, is enough. Statement number 2 is sufficient by itself to answer the question. Therefore, the answer is b. That's it. We do not need to put them together. Uh, and of course, we cannot say either because D stands for either because the first statement we saw was not enough. That's all. The answer is B. If they were asking, okay, since let's carry it on a little bit more. If the question was how much is X as opposed to absolute value of X, how much is X, then we would have needed both statements together. Because this statement, the second statement tells me that X is positive 2 or negative 2. First statement tells me that X, whatever the hell it is, is a negative number. Well, this tells me it's a negative number, this tells me it's a positive 2 or a negative 2. Putting the two statements together, putting the two statements together, we would have arrived at the conclusion that x must be negative 2. But that's not what they're asking. The question is not how much is x, the question is how much is the absolute value of x. And that, answer, that question can be answered very easily by second statement by itself. So I'm going to demarcate it. This is the second statement right here. Oh, great. I picked up a different color marker with a blue cover on it and it's a black one. Oh well. As we say in the desert, say la vie. Anyway, so that was it. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, I do face-to-face -face personal tutoring, one-to-one -one tutoring. I also tutor over the telephone. It does work. Uh, I was surprised myself when I first started about a year ago. And I also tutor over the, over the internet through Skype. So if there is anything at all that I can help you with, with any aspect of the GRE, I do the entire exam. If you wish to get hold of me, go to my website at www.prepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepp